Uh, speaking of healthy, uh, Brian Wheeler, Mike Rice, joined now by we were talking about Maurice Lucas, his uh, son David, uh, carrying on the great legacy of his dad with the Maurice Lucas Foundation, and he has uh, been gracious enough to come in studio with us. And uh, I, I'm, I, I know that you don't have much time for stuff like this because the, the fourth annual Lucas Foundation celebration gala is coming up this Saturday, and we always talk about bigger and better, but this, without question, is going to be bigger and better. You've got more people. You've got a bigger location. You've got uh, more uh, celebrity guests involved. Uh, tell everybody about uh, what's ahead this Saturday. Well, we have our fourth annual dinner or celebration for my dad's foundation, and uh, this year it's at the Hilton downtown, and it's a much bigger venue. Um, it's downtown. You know, we've had it at different spots the last three years that were kind of out, you know, out of the downtown area. So, um, you know, it's more local. A lot more people can attend this year. Um, we got Bill Russell, Bill Walton is coming back, Lionel Hollins, and... Uh, you know, there's Buggy right there, but uh, yeah. you know, we Brian Grant's a big supporter, and we have Lenny Wilkins as one of our guest speakers. Um, so we're excited about that. Downtown Freddie Brown will be in attendance. So um, you know, we're shooting about 700 right now, wow. and uh, it's you know six days away. So now, I'm how, excited about it. How tough? Because Bill Russell doesn't go to a lot of things, and I know it's it's usually difficult to get Bill, but boy, it, but to honor your dad, I think. He'd come right away, wouldn't he? It's, it's always a blessing. You know, he, he's a tough guy to, to get to attend. And, you know, he's been three times already. Yeah. So um, last year he came with Bill Walton. And this year um, he's coming again. And Bill's actually coming again, too. So, you know, to have both the Bills in attendance oh. is, is always a treat. So, you know, my, my dad started that. He, you know, built relationships with certain different guys. And, you know, they've always had respect from him and what he's done in the community. And we're just trying to carry that on. So it's a it's just a mere hundred and fifty dollars a ticket for the opportunity to hear from and meet all those uh, big time celebrities. Two hundred dollars if you're going to the Sky After Party, which is going to be hosted by our outstanding Blazers DJ uh, OG One. And uh, there's an opportunity for you, of course, to get a group together to, to have a table. So uh, we haven't shut out the opportunity for you to be a part of this. Uh, you can go to uh, ml20, ml20.org, uh, to register and find out more information. And there will be an auction as part of the evening. David, you were telling me about some of the items. Uh, Mr. Walton's donated a pretty unique item that uh, can't exactly be found every day of the week. Yeah, Bill is actually donating a night at his estate. Um, and he was excited to do that. You know, he's he's donated a few other items in the past few years, but he wants to donate his his house for you know a retreat for a business or you know a personal use. Um, but he has you know. Can from you bring some, OG One with you? To I'm sure he's gonna have his own DJ. He's probably oh, gonna be oh, on there yeah. with the Grateful Dead or something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, that's a unique package, and we'll have that up for auction. And uh, you know, for trips from Thailand to Italy to Bali. Um, and we have a bunch of other stuff, sporting packages from, you know, the, the Portland Thunder to the Blazers to OSU, U of O, um, Seahawks, um, a lot of different experiences. Brand Jordan is, is donating experience as well. Um, so we're very excited. We have, you know, over 100 auction items and in our silent auction, and then we have 14 larger um, items for our live auction. So now, we're when, did, when did you start putting it all together? The day after last year's event? Uh, it How takes long a, does it take? It takes a long time. It's our third, you know, this is our fourth year. So, you know, it's, it, you build a routine, you build your contacts up, and the people that support, you know, from the first year to the second year keep supporting every single year. So it's easier to, to get items, but, you know, you want to reach out and try and get new items. So, you know, my job and, and our procurement team has been to reach out and to get as many new items as you can like we haven't had a Seahawks package in in any of our auctions so we got that we haven't had you know a Bali or or Italy trip so we got that and Thailand's a new one um so you know we probably touched wow. 30 40 new people to to donate to donate auction items so so people hear the, the, the name Maurice Lucas Foundation, but maybe they don't totally understand all the good that the foundation does on a day-to-day -day basis. Correct. We have an after-school program, and uh, right now we're at Irvington, and it's our, our third year. We just started last week. Um, and we start sixth grade, and we go to eighth grade, and our, um, our mission statement is teaching life lessons through sport. And uh, we have an in-classroom piece, we have a curriculum piece, and we have a gym piece. And we kind of bridge that gap between the core values that we teach. Um, so it's exciting. It's, we went from two days a week for two hours a day to four days a week for two hours a day for an entire year. And uh, we've been at Irvington for 
three years now, and uh, we're going to start our, our new school for, for a year-long program, and we've been at, you know, eight different schools and doing our nine-week sessions that go along with our one-year program. So, you know, our, we have a program director named Karen Barker, and she's, you know, been a rock star when it comes to, to the program, and she, you know, takes it to heart. So she's been putting a lot of time and energy into building the, the, the program up and to adding new things and offering scholarships, and we do a bunch of different field trips throughout the year and uh, try to, you know, get them, you know, be able to see like OSU or a college and campus and a dorm room and what it takes to get into school and stuff like that. So we take a few trips like that to OSU, PSU, and PCC, and then we take them to a Blazer game, of course, and do different things like that. So, you know, kind of open the kids' kids' eyes. But we focus on at-risk, low-income, special-needs kids. Uh, Maurice would really be proud of how you've carried on at Woodney. Uh, I hope so. You know, he he had some big shoes to fill, and you know, I'm trying to do the best I can between our family members, and you know, it's 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 very different with him being gone. Yeah. You know, he's it's been four years, but it feels like it's been a lifetime. You know, I think about him every second of the day, and there's nothing I do that I don't think about him. You know, and there's a lot of big supporters and a lot of people that you know he was dear to. So, you know, it's, it's awesome to have the support from the Blazers, you know, being our title sponsors this year, along with Nike and Brand Jordan. Um, you have Alpine Mortgage and uh, Community Cares as our next biggest sponsor. So, you know, there's a lot of a lot of support, you know, that supports the foundation. And, you know, these kids need, you know, as much support as we can. And we're trying to give back as, as much as we can and, and touch as many kids as we can. So, you know, all the support we can get, it will take it. It's coming up uh, this Saturday, the Lucas Foundation uh, fourth annual uh, celebratory uh, gala, gala at the Hilton in downtown Portland starting at uh, 5 o'clock. And, again, the great speakers and uh, great celebrities that will be on hand. We're going to spend a few more minutes with David. We'll talk a little bit more about the event, what the foundation does, and uh, about uh, the impact on his on his life that his dad still has. And, uh, and how he punched out Chocolate Thunder. Yeah, yeah. In fact, those shirts uh, are, are really illustrate that, that great, great pose from uh, Game 2. <laughs> Two of the 77 finals that turned that entire series around. We'll continue. It's Trailblazers courtside. Brian Wheeler, Mike Rice. We'll spend a few more minutes with David Lucas as we continue. We are stream live at trailblazers.com and simulcast on Comcast Sportsnet and the Blazers Radio Network. mentioned the season is right around the corner and that means the annual Wells Fargo Fan Fest which is uh, set now for Sunday October 5th here at the Moda Center that means it's an opportunity for you to uh, be on hand for a very open Trailblazers practice. How do they get scrimmage. tickets? Well, it's very easy. Uh, doors open at 6 o'clock. Uh, so, again, because everything's free, you got to line up early for the best seats. But uh, if you normally sit, for instance, in the 300 level or you want to experience sitting in a different spot, you have the opportunity to do that. The admission is free. You can pick up a family pass at your Oregon or Southwest Washington Wells Fargo location. Or if you got a Wells Fargo card, just show that at the doors of the Motor Center, and uh, you're in on Sunday, October 5th for the annual Fan Fest. Open practice, inter-squad scrimmage. It's always great opportunity good. To it's see. Good. Yeah, and, and it's a great time to have it because it's right before the first yeah. preseason game. So it's your first chance to see this year's Trailblazers. Brian Wheeler, Mike Rice, back on Trailblazers courtside, uh, joined uh, again by David Lucas. And, uh, David, uh, this much I know. Uh, I can't say that I've attended too many uh, celebrations of life services in, in, my, in my lifetime. But I know on a very difficult day for you, uh, the the service that, that we had for your dad after his passing and the speech that you gave at that particular service was to me, and I, we played it that night on this show, and I, to me it was as as moving and uh, and just just a, a great capsule of not only your dad's life but the impact that he had on on your life, and and to hear you say in our last segment that you still think about him every day, uh, it's not surprising hearing you talk about him on that particular day? Well, it was one of those things where, you know, you spent, what, 28 years of your life with your father, and, you're, you know, I was really close to him. 
and uh coming up to that to that ceremony you know i was i was really nervous for one and uh you know i wasn't quite sure what to say and and how to say it because i wasn't sure if i was gonna be able to make it through it you know and uh you know, I had some help with some people. It's like, just, you know, be yourself, tell stories, and uh, just let it come out. And I kind of wrote down some notes and, you know, about different stories or, you know, memories that I had with him and uh, just started talking. And, you know, little do I know, it was 45 minutes in, and I was still <laughs> on the stage. And but no you didn't it, know it, I tell you. No, I did not know it. Not was, know it, it. So, no, we didn't know. I'm saying I was, I was listening because it was so riveting. I mean, it was, it was so interesting and you know, hinging on every word i mean for somebody who you know you're saying now you weren't sure what you're going to say it sounded like you'd rehearsed that thing 20 times because you came off so composed i mean everything was just obviously flowing from the heart it was and i didn't want to be up there saying what everyone else wanted me to say you know i just spoke from the heart and you know it's tough man losing a father like you know i have a youth program and uh you know there's kids that are you know single you know household and they don't have a father and you know I was blessed to have a father for 28 years and to be able to experience all the things that I went through you know that he went through and and uh to be around you know this atmosphere and to meet you know go to all-star games and all that kind of stuff so you know I, I was really blessed to have the household and have the father and, and and the mom and the stepmom that I had and uh you know so now with our program you know we teach with at-risk, low-income special needs kids, the same kids that are, you know, missing a father at this early age of sixth grade and seventh grade that need that extra, you know, that extra push and that extra motivation. They need a mentor, you know. So it's, you know, it's important to, to try to get to these kids when they're young because, you know, there's it's very easy, especially right now in this era, that it's very easy to, to veer off to the wrong path. And we're trying to keep these kids on on the right path so you know I was blessed to have my father you know put me on that right path to be able to do what I'm doing you know there's eight million stories about your dad and <laughs> you know and I watched him at practice and you know he he could throw a forearm with the best of them. Charles Barkley told an interesting story about your dad can you repeat it for us well Charles was on uh he was on a show and he was talking about um uh, you know the enforcers and they talked about my yeah. dad and he had mentioned that, uh, you know, he had played with against him and he was a rookie. And uh, he said that my dad came up to him and hit him with a forearm shiver in his throat as hard as he could. <laughs> and uh, he went up to one of his teammates and he was like, you know, Maurice Lucas just hit me with a forearm. So what do I do? <laughs> and then he said, uh, I guess the guy that he had talked to said, uh, he's like, hit him back. Hit him back, big fella. Just give him a big hit. And he's like hit the enforcer he's like no hit him back and so I, he said that he had hit my dad and my dad's like welcome to the nba <laughs> and he was like cool so that was one of the stories that uh you know he had brought up and those i thought thought it was funny did he show you a lot of little tricks about how to you know give the old forearm he had every trick in his sleeve you know especially with being how big he was and having the forearms he and i always said that he had man strength you know yeah being 6'10 and you know 280 pounds so he's always taught me taught me those little things here and there and you know in my career especially when i started getting serious about basketball he you know you were smaller when you were younger oh, i was 6'4 165 pounds out of yeah. high school <laughs> so uh, you know i was at oregon state skinny and and <laughs> people was making fun of me and like that's the that's the enforcer son <laughs> you know so i i had to hit the weights and ho hoped i would grow a little bit and i ended up doing that and yeah you know, i ended up all right yeah you did but he, he joked with us though and, and and say that you know I, I he goes i don't even know if i really could have you know won a lot of actual fights but the but the, the 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 thought that maybe i would fight somebody the intimidation factor i mean he certainly wasn't going to tell anybody that that he was going to go up against i mean he, he ran with that reputation hey and the did way well he looked it. at people oh yeah he yeah. didn't need to fight that's near that's, that's near alone got stare, people man. Yeah. I'm, in practice i even <laughs> stepped back he was like hit him first you know if they're if he you know in, in that 77 in that fight you know that was a, a big deal and yeah you know we don't promote you know fighting and, and all kinds of stuff that's why you have the shirt on but you know daryl was being the bully yeah. you know and it yeah. was come after a smaller you know teammate of my dad's bobby gross and you know he's actually our vice chair of the foundation yes right you know so that's a coincidence but anyways he had body slammed bobby gross and my dad came to the rescue you know <laughs> he always came to rescue for bill walton and, and everyone yeah. else so it's it's a great tribute i mean to your dad we know that bill walton always I mean, if you bring up your dad's name, I mean, he he, he can talk about a lot of subjects for, for quite a lot of time, but oh, yeah. he can go on forever talking about your dad. And the ultimate tribute is naming his son Luke after after your dad, basically. Yeah, that was, you know, and I, I thought that was special. You know, Bill, 
is a kind of pl- a kind of person that he loves my father and like I, I didn't realize it for the last he got my dad got inducted to the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame and Bill came down for the for the ceremony and he was going down the street you know prancing my dad's name and and right then I knew that Bill loves my dad and he's been coming to these events and we asked him for his bio for this year because he's in our he's on our program and uh he put you know glad to have known Maurice Lucas yeah that's all he wanted on there so he's you know he's he's a good friend and you know he respected my dad and he appreciated my dad always being there for him and making it easier for him well, and obviously it's made, it's made a big difference. Clearly. All the Blazer teams now, do you think there will be one that ever can match what that 77 team did? That team was special. And I wasn't around during that time. But, you know, I watched the highlights and I watched the, the different games, the entire series. And, you know, they were just clicking like, like yeah. no other. And I, it's hard to see that, you know. Yeah. You see the Spurs clicking like that. But, you know, it – you never know. You know, I, I have faith that the Blazers will, you know, have another championship down the road. When, I don't know. Well, it's nice that uh, our current head coach, Terry Stotts, talks so glowingly about that team and uh, and Jack Ramsey and all the people that were affiliated with it and says he wants his team to be thought of in the same vein as, as that great team. And, and that's obviously a, a wonderful team to try to emulate because when you talk about a team, that, that's exactly how they played as a, as a team, and that's how they were able to beat a group of maybe more talented individuals, but uh, certainly the Sixers didn't play anywhere near as much as a team as that Blazers team did, and that's why Portland were the champs back in 1977, a year that uh, will always be glorious in the minds of Blazer fans near and far, that's for sure. 